it just me? Or can things that evolutionists claim take long amounts of time actually happen very quickly? Jane, I got the new case. I got the heavy duty one. The heaviest duty one on the market. You could roll a truck over this baby. I've always wanted to do this. <laughs> Hadn't yes. put it on yet. Had not put it on yet. Oh no. Oh no. Oh, you, you didn't. Oops. Oh man. What normal person throws a phone? Well. I never said I was normal. Okay, I'm so sorry. Puppy dog guys. Well, you know, I'm not like upset upset. I was expecting a call from the scholarship board today. The process takes months and if they can't contact me, it's just gonna be that much longer. We can do this, we can fix this. We just have to put the pieces back on the screen and then use this shipping tape to Put it all back together. Not gonna work. Yes, it will. Yes, it will. Who knew a phone could shatter so completely? <sighs> this is a nightmare. No, it isn't. No, look, we can do this. We can do this. We almost got it done. See? Look. Ah, uh, here's Australia. <laughs> okay, look, that can go there. And then look, we already have Africa. North America. Yes, see? Now look, soon enough we'll have Pangea, and then your phone will be able to work. Pangea? You mean the supercontinent? Yeah, I was just reading about it for this week's homework. Let's see, it was page 162. Now, right here, they believe all the continents were together to form Pangea 225 million years ago. But not everyone agrees, right? True. Thousands of scientists believe in fast continental sprint rather than slow continental drift. One famous scientist by the name of Dr. John Baumgartner created a computer model for plate tectonics that thousands of geophysicists use to investigate Earth processes. His model has given us an understanding of how the continents split apart thousands, not millions of years ago. Oh yeah, isn't he the creator of Terra? Yep. In 1997, the U.S. News and World Report reported Terra was created by a Los Alamos lab scientist, the world's preeminent expert in the design of computer models for geophysical convection, the process by which the Earth creates volcanoes, earthquakes, and the movement of the continental plates. Didn't he show that they can also move very quickly? Right, but because the theory of evolution takes a long period of time to supposedly happen, many only accept uniformitarian ideas. Uniform a who? Oh, uh, it defines it right here. Let's see. Geologists make inferences based on the principle of uniformitarianism. This principle states that the same processes that operate today operated in the past. So they can determine the rate at which a river is currently cutting through a canyon and then use that to determine how old it is? Correct. But what this principle refuses to take into account is the major catastrophic events of the past. Even many evolutionary geologists are starting to recognize the importance of regional catastrophes in understanding the geologic features on Earth. Ooh. I think this might be the scholarship board. Quick, hand me South America. Oh, here. All right, here we go, ready? Done, go. Please work, please work. <clears throat> Hello? Yes, I was calling to let you know your hearing aids are in. What? I said your hearing aids are in. Oh, you've got the wrong number. So I'm guessing that wasn't the scholarship board? Nope. I probably missed their call. Now I'm not going to hear back from them for weeks or months. Well, at least your phone works. Okay. So our textbooks say that rock layers take a long time to form. Have you heard about Mount St. Helens? No. Yeah. Okay, well. During the 1980s eruptions at Mount St. Helens, 200 layers of rock were deposited in three hours. Entire river systems were carved in a matter of months, right through 700 feet of hard rock. 
Examples like this cause geologists to rethink some of their previous ideas and give biblical creationists great models for the flood of Noah's day. So imagine what a worldwide flood would do. Exactly. So, here it says, these rock layers in the Grand Canyon were laid down over millions of years and were then slowly washed away by the river, forming a channel. That's uniformitarian thinking again, isn't it? Yep. If these rock layers took millions of years to form, then the bottom rock layers would be hard and brittle by the time the ones at the top would be deposited. But near Grand Canyon, all the layers are bent together. If they were bent together, well, they were hard. Snap! The rocks didn't shatter like they should have. They must have been bent together while they were soft and pliable. The whole stack. That means they were all deposited at about the same time. Not over millions of years. So what about the canyon itself? Well, if the river slowly carved the canyon, then we should see all the material piled up in a river delta. But it's completely missing. In fact, about 1,000 cubic miles has been eroded to form the Grand Canyon. Where did it all go? If the canyon was slowly eroded by the Colorado River, an enormous delta should be found at the mouth of the river where it empties into the Gulf of California. But the delta only contains about 1% of the eroded material we would expect if the evolutionary explanation were true. Unless it was carved by a massive catastrophe, which carried all the material away. That's what I think. Check out what it says about fossils in our biology book. Even if an organism lives in an environment where fossils can form, the chances are slim that its dead body will be buried in sediment before it decays. So, animals have to be quickly buried in sediment so its cells can be preserved and then replaced by the surrounding minerals. Okay, so check out this fossilized clam. You have fossilized clams in your purse. Yeah, they hurt my pocket. Anyway, so what happens to a clam when it dies? No more homework? No. They open up and their two shall separate. But this clam was fossilized before it had a chance to fall open or be pulled open by a scavenger. They've also found fossils of a fish coming out of another's mouth. How quickly did that get fossilized? Not fast enough. Or what about a marine reptile caught giving birth? Awkward. Yeah. And they found many dinosaur bones with red blood cells, soft tissue, proteins, and even DNA. How quickly would that have to be buried before it deteriorated? And have it last for 70 million years? There's no way. But all of these could have been fossilized during the worldwide flood. Right. Noah's flood would create many of the rock layers that stretch over entire continents and bury millions of creatures for us to find as fossils today. It doesn't take millions of years to form fossils. It can happen rapidly under the right conditions. I guess it all comes down to what it says in 2 Peter chapter 3, that scoffers will come in the last days, walking according to their own lusts, and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. For this, they will willfully forget that by the word of God, the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of water and in the water, by which the world that then existed perished, being flooded with water. They deny the worldwide flood. <clears throat> yes, this is John. Really? 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 All right, well, thank you very much. Yeah, I'll talk to you then. Guess who that was? That was the scholarship board. Did that go well? Yes. Yes! I got the scholarship. I thought I was gonna have months of paperwork. And I just got it, just like that. Oh, congratulations, John! Yeah, <laughs> I guess things you think are gonna take a really long time can sometimes happen very rapidly. Yep, kinda makes you think, doesn't it?